<laughs> Why does she call you a slut? She compliments me now that we're on the TV. Then... Oh, damn. Now look back at a trial that's become a national obsession. Not guilty, my ass. It's trailer parks and mistrialed on Nightstand, where comedy doesn't get any more better. And now, here's the star of Nightstand, Dick Dietrich! Thank you, thank you. It's an unusual case that has received nationwide publicity, from the local trailer park tattler, <laughs> all the way to the New York Times Picayune. <laughs> It's a story that's got most of low-income America on the edge of their broken lazy boys. <laughs> About a year ago, a Floss County, Arkansas man died in a fiery car crash. Accident? His mother's convinced he was murdered. She's here today because she wants justice. Please welcome Miss Betty Will Cooper. <laughs> Betty Wilma, welcome. Uh, tell us about your son. What's his first name? Billy Ray Jim Dick. So he has four names? No, it's Billy Ray Jim. <laughs> Is this the old who's on third routine? <laughs> anyway, Billy Ray Jim Dick, he died in a car accident. Betty Wilma, tell us what happened. Well, Dick, Billy Ray Jim died in a car accident. <laughs> Interesting, but uh, bear with me for a second. How did he die in a car accident? Well, it was late on a Tuesday night at the trailer park, and Billy Ray Jim called me up and said he was going to the store mm -hmm. and did I need anything. Well, I did need me some Bisquick and some potted meat and Spam for sandwiches. But Billy Ray Jim Dick never came home with them their vittles, did he? No. no, the police called me up and said that Billy Ray Jim had probably fallen asleep at the wheel and driven his pickup truck into a refinery. And the refinery blew up and all that was left of him was just some chunks of his underwear, pieces of his pieces of his favorite, you know, little Budweiser can hat. But you don't think it was an accident, do you? No. No, I don't. I think that somebody kidnapped him and drugged him with that gas you know that's in cans of cheese and propped him up behind the wheel of his pickup and just sent him on to his death. Uh-huh. You paint an interesting photo, so you, so you think someone had him killed? I don't think. I know. His wife, Jolene, had him killed, and you want to know why? Pourquoi? I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> Jolene was a slut. Ooh. She was a slut who didn't even wait for the dirt to get spiders before she started taking up with men again. <laughs> Didn't wait for the dirt to get spiders. That's right. You gotta love these folksy aneurysms. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Betty Wilma, just because a woman's a slut, that's not enough reason for her to kill somebody. No, but it is if that person's got money. Ooh, Billy Ray Jim Dick had money. Honey, he had the monopoly on the septic tank business there in our... Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, listen, he loved that stinking thing. <laughs> So he was sitting on a lot of money. That's right. That's right. Never enough for Jolene, though. She'd spend money like a Chinese horseshoe at a three-legged dog race. <laughs> a Chinese horseshoe at a three-legged dog race. Miller, are we keeping track of these aneurysms? Now, uh, Betty Wilma, you said she was taken up with a lot of men? She didn't even wait. At Billy Ray Jim's funeral, she's just throwing herself all over Big Bob Little. <laughs> Big Bob Little. Big Bob runs the trailer park we all live in. The Pair of Dice. The Pair of Dice. And you think Big Bob was in cahoots with Jolene? I do. They was in cahoots. They was lovers. I mean, he could hardly wait just to get my little Billy Ray Jim out of the picture. And now my dead son is gone. He's gone. He's... <laughs> I'm sorry. I need my pills. Can we break? I need my pills. Okay. <laughs> Betty Wilma, you go ahead and medicate yourself. And you stay tuned because we'll be back faster than a six-toed cat on a Mexican gun rack. <laughs> Miller, these are fun. Are you a lone?
owner who possesses firearms and explosives? You could be a guest on Nightstand. Call 555 Dicky. In a month of Sundays on Nightstand, they make the world a happy place. It must be great to see the smiles on those kids' faces as you guys pile out of those little cars. Actually, Dick, it's taking dumb rat bastards like you and smashing your faces in the friggin' dent folks for asking stupid questions like that. Irritable clown syndrome, only on Nightstand. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. We're talking to Betty Wilma Cooper, who claims her son, Billy Ray Jim Dick Cooper, was murdered. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, Betty Wilma, was uh, Billy Ray Jim Dick your only child? No, there's another one who's stillborn. Oh, con congratulations. When's he due? No, he's, he's stillborn. <laughs> he's still to be born. When's he due? No, Dick, he's stillborn. <laughs> Here we go, another Elvis and Costello routine. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, let's get back to our story. In our last segment, you accused your daughter-in-law, Jolene, of being in cahoots with her lover, Big Bob, to murder your son. Is that right? That's right. And they're responsible for it? They're more than responsible. They did it. Well, folks, you want to find out if they did it? Yeah! 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 You want to meet half of the accused? Yeah! Come on out, Jolene! Now, Jolene, Jolene, you've been backstage in our backstage area listening to Betty Wilma backstage. What do you think so far? Well, I heard what she said, and I don't know where she gets her information because I loved Billy Ray Jim Dick. Then why does she call you a slut? Oh, yeah, she compliments me now that we're on the TV. But at home... Let me tell you, it is a different story. I mean, I don't want to say it, but she is a real B-I-C-H. Miller, Miller, can we, can we say bish? We'll, we'll get rolling. Uh, uh, Jolene, um, you were married to Billy Ray Jim Dick for three years. Where, where did you meet him? At a family reunion. And you say you truly loved him. Yes, I did. No, you did. Yes, I did. I was a good wife to Billy Ray Jim. You are just jealous of me ever since I took your son away to the other end of that trailer park. Hey, listen, if you if you're such a good wife, how come you never gave him any? Oh. Ooh, well, how after that. Well, how would you know that, Betty yeah. Wilma? Oh, you know what? It's a small trailer park, Dick, and I <laughs> Whenever I went to their trailer and was knocking, that trailer wasn't a rockin'. I offered my loins, Dick, but he never took. He never took. All he wanted to do was sit around in his BVDs and watch Matlock. Sounds like my first wife. If that's true, how come he never told me that? Maybe that's because he never had a chance, because y'all is so busy entertaining them truckers. Ooh. Truckers? What? Yeah, sometimes five or six a night. I mean, this woman, no way. This woman no way. is a regular human loading dock. Five or six truckers, mercy sakes alive, we got ourselves a convoy. <laughs> You too. Just stop your bishing. <laughs> Boy, you've been together for a minute now. You've, you're arguing like two riverbanks on a Lithuanian dartboard. <laughs> All right, let's introduce the fourth wheel in this triangle. Come on out, Big Bob. Well, I can see why they call you, uh, Bob. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Big Bob, you and, uh, you and Jolene were lovers, is that right? That's right. And, and, uh, w where'd you meet Jolene? Well, I guess I first paid her some mind there at the, at the funeral. Uh -huh. I was, I was worried about her and concerned, just like I would be with any tenant of mine. 
Oh, that's right. You are in the trailer park business, right? <laughs> yes, sir. That's right. I am the largest owner of mobile home parks in all of northeastern Closs County. Really? That's right. 27 of them, Dick. And all of them overlooking miniature golf courses. You see, you get your country club living at 1 24th of the price. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, let's get back to the story. You met Jolene at the funeral. She's looking kind of lonely. Is that pretty much what happened? Yeah, well, I saw her there all gussied up and wearing shoes. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir, we got to talking. One thing led to another, and... You know, it weren't long before she was petting my skunk. <laughs> Bob, 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 there are children secretly watching this show. Well, well no, Dick, you see, I, I got me this here pet skunk. And, oh, that's right, that's and, right. And, 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 and Jolene took a real liking Wait, to hey, it. Hey, this is such <laughs> She didn't need a shoulder to lean on because she was a sperm in her way before she didn't even recognize No, 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 You lie like a rabid bear in a bird bath. Hey, right. You lie like a well, you lie like a dead cow on a train track. Yeah, yeah, well, you all lie like a German puppeteer at a Microsoft Word convention. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Hey, we'll be back with more on your right after this. Oh, hey, I look back at a trial that's become a national obsession. Not guilty, my age. All this on the second half hour of Nightstand with me, Dick Dietrich, the comedy that makes fun of Paul. Thank you. We are back with an inbred mother, an heiress to a family fortune, and some accused murderers. Sounds like the Kennedys. <laughs> Our next guest on Nightstand is one of the most respected journalists on any of those sleazy tabloid news shows. She's researched and written a new book on this case on, and on Trailer Park Life called Bubba's in the Mist. <laughs> Please welcome Diane Glass. <laughs> Diane, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Dick. It's nice to be here. Now, I did not read your book, but I did listen to the book tape as read by Chelsea Clinton. <laughs> And what's clear to me is that these people may not recognize you, but you know them very well. Is that right? That's right, Dick. In fact, I was their neighbor in a trailer park for three months. I don't remember any Diane. I don't. Now, I eavesdropped on practically everybody there. <laughs> um, well, that's because I used a pseudonym. Ah, French for a false disguise. <laughs> and you lived among them without them ever realizing you were a sexy reporter. <laughs> That's right, Dick. In fact, when I was doing that, I uncovered evidence that Big Bob Little had the motive, the opportunity, and the know-how to murder Billy Ray Jim. Ooh. Oh, well, that's, that's a bunch of <laughs> here. I mean, now why would I want to kill some little old manure-pushing, piss-ant son of a oh. <laughs> money five thousand dollars for accidental death five thousand dollars what can you do with that are you nuts for five thousand dollars i could drive my trailer all the way to spain and live high on the hog like a hamster on a lawnmower <laughs> Dick, it's just crazy talk here because if there's one thing that big bob little don't need no more of it's money how about that diane dick his business was almost wiped out last year by those tornadoes <laughs> Your cash flow is low, and you needed money. Oh, That's right. Oh, Billy Ray Jim's money, I, I, I bet. That's a damn lie, Betty Wilma. Now, either. you better stop spreading these cow chips about me, or I'm going to sue your pimply butt. Oh, well, you go ahead and sue me, fat boy. My lawyer's going to work Acting like a bunch of country pumpkins. <laughs> actually, Dick, uh, actually, Jolene didn't know anything about this. Big Bob used her for the insurance money. Oh, that shit. is ridiculous. Oh, I love Big Bob, and I know he loves me. That's right. Sweetie. Maybe he does, but he's tried to make love to a lot of other women, too. Ooh, well, he looks like a guy who can cover some ground. <laughs> I do not believe that. Oh, no. 
Remember when you played the propane salesman and I was the naughty little girl whose mommy wasn't home? Velma? Are you oh, my God! Congratulations, you're still born too. Oh. <laughs> How do you know it's your child? You probably don't even know it's your child. Shut you up. All right, all right. Hey, this is just starting to get fun. Almost as much fun as rotten kielbasa on a broken Stairmaster. <laughs> but don't go away because there's one more big surprise to go. Stick around. On some upcoming nightstand, it's really scary camping stories. Okay, Dave, you're alone in the woods. Two burly mountain men approach you, and one says, Hey, you've got a real purdy mouth. <laughs> then what happens? Find out only on Nightstand. Thank you, we're back, and we're talking about homicide in a double wide. Actually, it was more like bad luck in a pickup truck, but that's not as dramatic. Anyway, to recap, Betty Wilma is the mother of Billy Ray Jim Dick. She thinks her son, she thinks her son was murdered by her daughter-in-law, Jolene, who was taken up with Big Bob Little, who may actually be the trigger man in a refinery accident that senselessly took the life of Billy Ray Jim Dick so prematurely. Now, Diane... Diane Glass, veteran TV reporter who went undercover and under the covers to play propane delivery boy with Big Bob Little has hard evidence that could convict the real killer, which she is about to divulge. Dick, that there story has more holes in it than a cheese log at a woodpecker's convention. Yes, sir. Sorry, Bob but I've got the evidence. Oh, Fake well, statements showing his company's broke, photos of him with other women, not to mention the canceled check to the man he paid to snap Billy's brakes. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Bob. Oh, baby, I couldn't live without you. And plus, I I did need that money. Oh. I knew it. Damn it, I knew it. Now I'm going to watch you deep fry fat boy. Oh, not so fast, Betty Wilma. I happen to know that Big Bob Little did not kill your son. That's a damn lie, Dietrich. No, it isn't, Bob, and I can prove it. Dick, Dick, I wouldn't have received a half million dollar advance if my facts had been in error. Trust me, Billy Ray Jim is dead. <laughs> Au contrary, Diane, I happen to know that the man Big Bob Little killed is alive. Oh, my God! Whoa. Oh, my God! Whoa. You mean my son is alive? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, my prayers have been answered! Oh, sir! Thank you! Where is he? When can I see my boy? You can see him right now okay. because he's backstage in our janitor's closet. Oh, my God! We're going to bring him out right now. You want to meet Billy Ray Jr. Dick? Ray Jim Dick? <laughs> it used to be Billy Ray Jim Dick. Now it's Billy Ray Joan Dick. Oh, it, it's just Billy Ray Joan. Oh. So, so you lost the dick. <laughs> oh, no, no, people. No, people, please. Anyway, he contacted us when he wanted to be on our young transsexual show, and that's when we first heard your pathetic story. Is that right? Yes, Dick. I've always felt like I was living a lie. Same old story. You felt like a man in a homely woman's body. <laughs> then when I learned that Big Bob had wanted to kill me, I realized I could go and start a new life. So I, I went down to Tijuana and had the surgery done. By a doctor specializing in transsexuals. 
uh, actually, no, I could only afford a vet. <laughs> but he had done a lot of neutering. <laughs> we'll get back to that one on one of our weekly transsexual shows. But in the meantime, the case is solved. You are back. How does everybody feel? It must be oh, great. What the hell are you talking about, Dietrich? You just got me to confess to attempted murder on national television. Gee. Oh. And I'll probably have to return the $500,000 advance I got from my book. <laughs> Can I find out? One of my husbands is, is a woman, and the other one is a cheater. Well, how about you, Betty Wilma? Your son's back in your arms. you got to feel great. <laughs> well, maybe you'll come back for our Mama Don't Let Your Baby Grow Up To Be Cowgirl show. <laughs> well, what have we learned tonight? Actually, not a lot. <laughs> Except that sometimes when you're dead, it's better to stay dead. And we also heard some great country aneurysms. In fact, we heard so many, I think I'm going to get a brain euphemism. <laughs> For now, I'm Dick Dietrich. People, people, you got to stay right where you are, because there's more Nightstand coming right at you. Tonight on Nightstand, a look back at a trial that's become a national obsession. A bizarre freak show in which the media, lawyers, witnesses, and ex-jurors all cast in for their own selfish purposes. Tonight... It's our turn. <laughs> Folks, it's been almost four years since the mistrial of the century began. There's hardly a person dead or alive who isn't aware of this spectacle which appeared daily on our TV sets. All because the defendant was super martial arts movie star, Jackie Wang. <laughs> hey, who hasn't seen a Wang movie? Films like Boxing the Dragon and Fisting the Snake. <laughs> With success, rumors emerged that Wang was gay. But like most movie stars, when asked about his homosexuality, Wang was tight-lipped. <laughs> but once he became a defendant fighting for his life, he also became gayer than the front row at a Bette Midler concert. <laughs> The lifestyle card had been played. The evidence against him was overwhelming. But when his brilliant team of attorneys managed to move the trial to San Francisco with a mostly gay jury, <laughs> many started to believe that Wang would walk if he could just stick it out. <laughs> and he did. No one was more disappointed than my first guest, who was the captain of the losing team. Let's take a look at her in action early in the trial. The defense's characterization of me as hysterical is sexist and demeaning. And all I have to say is, I am rubber and you are glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and it sticks to you. Folks, you want to meet her? Come on out, Patricia Stark. Oh, oh. Is she a hot babe or what? Huh? All right, Patricia, you were the top banana in the whole media fishbowl. You spend almost three years on the mistrial of the century, then you lose it on a technicality. My question, regrets? Sure, I've had a few. But then again, too few to mention. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm a big fan of the Beatles. But Patricia, there was a point in this trial when things did not look good for you. Your experts were destroyed on cross-examination. You were, had evidence that was disallowed. Your witnesses got bad ratings. Tell us about that. Well, uh, that was a bad time. So we convened our staff and our uh, outside experts, and we analyzed what we were doing wrong. And we all came to the same conclusion. A and what was that? I needed a makeover. <laughs> and obviously it paid off, huh? Right, audience? But, you know, let, let's be frank. I mean, you've become a media star with invitations to movie premieres, Hollywood parties. You've been romantically linked to everyone from John Stamos to famous Amos. <laughs> and I understand you hosted A&E's Evening at the Improv. How'd that go? Oh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, in fact, it went so well that I'm doing a pilot for my own late-night talk show. <laughs> we could be competitors. <laughs> really? <laughs> My next guest was the 
lead attorney for the defense, and is considered one of the most brilliant legal minds in the country. You've seen him on the Soul Train Awards, Deaf Comedy Jam, and on Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve. Come on out, Jimmy Hawkins! Welcome to Nightstand, Jimmy. Good to have you in the house, bro. <laughs> Thank you very kindly, Dick, for offering me this forum to disseminate my views to your fine, upstanding, and racially diverse audience. Ooh -hoo. Now, Jimmy, let's crack some corn. <laughs> Even before this case, you were a renowned attorney with some big cases that ran the gamut from famous Hollywood stars involved in domestic violence to athletes involved in domestic violence to famous politicians involved in domestic violence. Uh, but I guess all the hoopla in this, in this trial has gotten out of control, I'm, I'm assuming. You got that right, Dick. This trial has consumed my life 24-7. You know what that is? Uh, 31? <laughs> no, Dick, that's uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, lay a groove on me, Holmes. <laughs> But, but you have become, you have become a media darling. In fact, your curbside press conferences became one of the highlights of the trial. Miller, let's show one of those press conferences. Audience, watch the monitor. Folks at home, watch your TV sets. Yes, I think it was a very good day for my client. You saw it. I saw it. The entire world saw it. The condom did not fit. The condom did not fit. <laughs> I have to say, if anything bugged me during the trial, it was that moment. I mean, anyone who was in the courtroom knows that condom fit. What do you mean, that condom fit? Yes. The condom didn't fit. Oh, she was acting. No, I mean, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, hey, 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 folks, mistaken. folks, 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 let's get back to the trial. Now, Patricia has a, apparently a talk show for herself. Jimmy, what's going on for you commercially? Well, there have been some remunerations, dividends, gratuities, kickbacks, and various forms of largesse. Yeah. Largesse. Jimmy likes back. <laughs> no, Dick. Largesse is like an opportunity. Like my new line of men's cologne called Objection for Men. Yeah. And, of course, Jimmy Hawkins' legal briefs. The underwear with a scotch more room right where it counts. Mine fit me perfectly. That dick surprises me. Uh, anyway, uh, any other business uh, opportunities for you on the horizon? Well, as a matter of fact, Dick, I'm beginning a new 900 telephone line business. 900? That's a lot of lines. <laughs> so many wonderful people trying to get in touch with me, you know, to hear what's on the hawk's mind. Oh, you know... Very good, and I think we'd all like to hear that. So, Miller, have you dialed that number? Let's listen to that as we head into commercial. Thank you very kindly for calling the Jim Hawkins love line. <laughs> and if love's a crime, then I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> On an upcoming nightstand, it's celebrity stalkers. Famous Hollywood stars who stalk their fans. Whenever I get a fan letter, I look at the return address. Then I'd go over to their house and watch them all day long, harassing them, totally disrupting their lives. That'll teach them to write a letter to me. Any guesses who it is? Well, if you said to Winker, you're right. Ladies and gentlemen, Wink Martindale. Only on Nightstand. Yes, that's right. This evidence is incontrovertible, incontestable, indisputable, irrefutable, undebatable, undeniable, and unbelievable. We're talking to the architects of last year's mistrial of the century, the Jackie Wang murder case. So far, we've met the lawyers, but witnesses also became a part of our national unconscious. And no one... No one more so than my next guest. Please welcome hostile witness extraordinaire, Tito Palin. <laughs> Tito, uh, 
Uh, welcome. Hey, would you mind doing that line for us you became so famous for? Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> uh, come on, audience. What do you say? Uh, all right. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Tito, what a couple of years for you. You've gone from a relatively unknown, talentless actor to the world's most well-known talentless actor. Well, thank you. The ice skating special with Tanya Harding, the, uh, the uh, production of Love Letters with Heidi Fleiss. But the, the question for you, Tito, is don't you think you've taken advantage of this trial for your own selfish interests? N no, not at all. Come on, Tito, you're not under oath now. Oh, right, well then, yeah, sure. <laughs> You, you have to understand, I, I've been exploited too, which I explain in my new book, I Am the House Guest. Yes, I am the house guest. I, I did not read the book, but I did listen to the book tape as read by Fabio. <laughs> and one thing in the book surprised me, you've had some trouble with women, is that right? Oh, it's been like a nightmare, Dick. I've got women chasing me all over the place, but why am I telling you? You're a kind of celebrity. You must get tons of women. <laughs> Yes, I uh, do. In fact, uh, right now I'm heavily involved with one of the Baywatch girls, but uh, let's not tell anybody I think she should be the first to know. <laughs> let's get back to the trial and the exploitation thing, because some people say you two are also exploiting this trial. I dig what you're saying, Dick. And that's why I'm lending my name and image to only those products which present a dignified public portrayal. Dignified? Oh, yes. Sidebar soap is dignified. <laughs> well, excuse Ooh. me, but I don't think legalese panty liners scream decorum. <laughs> and, and, and jury curl hair products do. <laughs> Folks, come on. You know, this illustrates one of my biggest beefs with this trial. We're always getting sidetracked onto extraterrestrial issues. <laughs> Putting too much focus to the lawyers, the legal maneuverings, the media hype, the book deals, the lawyers' wardrobes, and all the while we forget about the victim. What's his name? The guy who got killed. <laughs> but with us tonight are the parents of... Uh, the guy who got killed. <laughs> Folks, could you stand up? Because tonight we want to hear your side of the story. We want to know how you feel about the case. You know, not some media pundit like Jerry Spence. What's his story anyway? You know, what's with a buckskin jacket, huh? If the guy was any good, he could afford a real suit. Don't you think, folks? <laughs> Anyway, thank you for being here. Your point of view made a difference. <laughs> There's a question up here. Yes, sir, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, William James Oshkosh. Terrific. Mr. Oshkosh, and where are you from? Oshkosh. <laughs> There's a coincidence. <laughs> what's your question? Uh, Miss Stark, did you ever think that Tito was the attacker? Oh, well, uh, this is a crime that required cunning and foresight, and intelligence, uh, coordination. No. <laughs> attacker was and that attacker was Mr. Wang. Do I need to remind you that my client was never found guilty? Oh, wait, no, your client skated on a technicality. I mean, he is still an insanely jealous man who kicked numerous persons in the head. We're talking about one of the biggest kung fu stars in the world here. He was always kicking people in the head. Some people shake hands, uh, he'd kick you in the head. <laughs> Most people will consider it an honor. It, it, oh, no, should I kick you in your head and that is going to be an honor? Yeah, you consider it an honor? Okay, okay, okay. Folks, right now we're going to have to take a break. So, audience, remember my admonitions. Do not form any opinions. Do not discuss the show among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not reach any conclusions. Don't get into a car with strangers. Don't talk with your mouth full. Don't go changing to try and please me. Start a cold feet of fever. A penny saved is a penny earned. On the next nightstand, great adventure stories. So you're a tightrope walker, and you're halfway across Niagara Falls on that tiny little wire when that pesky ear infection flares up. Then what happens? Only on nightstand. Okay, we're back. 
We're back and we're talking Wang's world. So far, we've met the lawyers and some witnesses. Other players in our drama were the jurors, or in the case of Donnie, a former juror. Donnie, now this was a predominantly gay jury. There were ten gays, is that right? And two bisexuals. Right. Now, was the jury predisposed to a verdict? Well, by the end, the gays were leaning to an acquittal. Right, and the bisexuals could go either way. <laughs> now, I should say that you wrote about this experience on an all-male jury in your book entitled 12 Angry Boys. That's right, Dick, and it made the bestseller list this week. Oh, congratulations. In fact, it's one of four ex-juror books on the bestseller list, the others being Confessions of a Wang Juror, <laughs> Hot Tub for 12, and I Hate Juror Number 7 by Juror Number 2. Now, Donnie, over two years in sequestration and then the mistrial, but can, between you, me, and, and my national audience, how would you have voted? Well, personally, I don't think the prosecution proved their case beyond a reasonable uh, doubt. Excuse me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We proved opportunity, and we proved motive, and we had overwhelming evidence. I mean, the man's custom-made shoe was found at the scene of the crime. It was a very common custom-made shoe, you understand? It had a left foot and a right foot. Wait, wait. Now, what about all the other evidence, huh? It doesn't matter. Because the evidence was contaminated. If it wasn't contaminated, Ugh. it was planted. And if it wasn't planted, it was tainted. This is absurd. No, is not... this is the truth. You can't handle the truth. You're a sore loser. You're so innocent. Then why did you just have him get on the stand and testify and tell his own story, huh? He did tell his own story. It's right there in his book, not guilty. Oh. <laughs> well, wait, now that is ridiculous because the truth is in my book, not guilty, my ass. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to hear the truth, you can read it in my book. Not guilty. You bet your ass. <laughs> this is what was wrong with the trial and what is, is wrong with the trial. Everything now. I mean, this man has made a mockery of our legal system. I mean, we all know that Jackie Wang is guilty. Now, I know it, and you know it, and all of America should know it because... I'm sorry, wait. I'm, are, are you okay? No, no, no. Are you okay? I just can't do it. I mean, you know. No. I'm sorry. I tried to be the, the, me a mom, and I tried to be a career woman, and I tried to be, you know, one of the boys, but I, I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to be the superwoman, and I couldn't because I'm just Patty Stark from Highland Park. <laughs> Hey, you just bury that wet face in as far as you want to go. Come on, Patty Cakes, it's okay. You just got in a little bit over your head. See, this ain't no party. This ain't no, no disco. This ain't no fooling around. You was in a big league dog fight, and the big dog bit you on your butt. It's just like I told Tito the night after the murders. I said, Tito, the key is oh, wait, wait, to wait, cover wait, your bases. You wait, no, no, no. Tito said that, that you didn't talk to him until at least a month after the murders. That's true. Tito, you said that? Yeah. Yes. I am a guest. Hey, uh, no, no, that isn't what he said. Tito, do you know what the penalty is for perjury? Uh, uh well, uh, can you repeat the question? Here we go again. Tito, five years in maximum security Tito have you ever been in prison um, can you repeat the question <laughs> never mind because backstage right now there's a prisoner here for our serial killer apology show we were gonna tape right after this but you know what this is better so let's give a warm night stand welcome to serial killer Willis Montgomery <laughs> Hey, uh, Willis, uh, welcome. Can, can you give Tito a sample of prison life? You prefer to be the husband or the wife? Oh, okay. 
Yes. I confess. Yes, Jackie did it. And I helped him hide the evidence in exchange for two months more free rent. You did what? I am shocked. You're cute. What you talking about, Willie? Oh, my, my, my prayers are answered. You talking about your prayers are yeah, answered. It's an answer. You're dealing with the big oh, dog no, here. Uh, uh, no, no, there they go again. Well, folks, we did something here tonight, and we'll find out what it was when we come back right after this. Next week on Night's Fan. Prostitution, Pete came to my place for titillation. Okay, watch the language. And deadly explosion. He was blown to kingdom come. Well, at least he died smiling. Then. Is hate on the rise? Today's clan. It's clan-tastic. New clan, old clan, makes no diggity. Ain't gonna be no brothers in it. How about it, Tiffany? Would you like to have a black member? All this and much more next week on Night's Fan with me, your host and friend, Dick Dietrich. We're back with our mistrial of the century post-mortem. As you know, aside from the brutal murder, a lot of good came out of this trial and our show. Patricia will probably get that conviction. Jimmy, Jimmy got a bunch of free advertising. Tito finally cleared his conscience. And, and it looks like we made a love connection. Our system of justice doesn't work. God bless America. For now, I'm Dick Dietrich.